Hello, legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony Live. We had a bit of a glitch last week with all the storms we've been getting in Central Texas. And I had just been talking about it right before it happened. We were disconnected because the lights flickered long enough for the internet service to drop off. So even though I was still powered up, I had no connection. I tried to reconnect using other means like uh, the LTE band on my iPad and so forth, but there was a lot of issues with it. So since it was over an hour anyway, went ahead and ended the session. Hopefully we won't have any issues today. We It's already rained. It's almost like it's Tampa, Florida here. Every afternoon we've been getting rain, which is nice. It's different. It's not normal for us. So of course the grass is growing like crazy, everything, you know, but it's still wet. Yeah, I'm not going to cut anything because I have a I have a lawn tractor that if I try to get out there is mushy like like a swamp, you know. But the guys that people pay, they come in and they they get the little walking ones and some of the ones you can stand on and they're cutting wet grass and you can see the divots in the yard as they do that just to pick up you know their money. So to each his own. But uh, it's great to be back on the live session here. I uh, finally went for a ride today. It's been like, this is day 10. I was off for like nine days, which is a long time. But with the way I train, I mean, it's been like two years since I took a break almost. You know, I took like a week off a while back. So 10, nine days is, you know, maybe two or three days for, for people who don't ride much. But the first hour or so, it was really weird. I did I made some clips just for fun, and I will load it on the channel later. But uh, it was it took about almost two hours before I felt like a cyclist again. It's like everything felt like it was automatic. I couldn't feel the sensations. You know, I was riding, but usually I can feel my muscles interacting. Everything was like I was floating. Everything felt very easy because I was just so rested. So I made sure that my gear selection, I always had a gear I could feel a little bit. And so I rode for almost two hours. I was going to do an hour, but when I went out there, it was such a nice morning. So it was good to get out. I'm wearing this jersey because I'm trying on what I'm going to wear tomorrow. Tomorrow is our Independence Day in the U.S., July 4th. And so it's a holiday here. So I'm going to take advantage of that and get a long ride in because over the weekend, we're going to go on a a family vacation. So I'm going to try to get some miles in ahead of time. But uh, the, there are some people that will be riding with Team RR. Hey, Cesar, how you doing? John Hill, welcome. Noel, good to see you here. But basically, there are some people riding tomorrow because a lot of times, like July 4th, they have a ride called Burn Your Buns. Paul Ilonga and I did it probably two years ago. It wasn't on July 4th. It was. It's always in July. And we did the ride. My issue with that ride was that they they did a loop to where for you to get 62 miles, you had to do a small loop twice. And it just didn't seem to be well planned out because in in the Conroe area where we ride normally, that, that's tons of routes they could have come up with. And so I wasn't that thrilled. I mean, we did it. It was OK, but it's not something that it's not one of my favorite rides to do. So they're, hold, they're holding it tomorrow, and there are quite a few people that are not going to be riding it, even though it's local. And so we're just going to head out. I plan on just going out to um, Bethel Grove area. It's a more challenging route than even the route that they will hold for that ride. And there are a few people that have posted on the Team RR board that they want to go. So I just told them that I would be there at 6.30 in the morning, and whoever's there, I'll ride with them. But basically, I told them I'll meet them at 6.30. Because nobody, it's hard to know how many people will turn up. But I don't care who turns up. I was going to ride solo if I needed to. I don't think uh, Paul Ilunga is available. He may be working tomorrow. <clears throat> Robert Tangler, welcome. Asborn, Chris. Yeah, this is a La Passion jersey. I'm trying it on because I'm going to take out my Colnago. And so the Colnago is red and white. So I figure I wear this jersey. It'll be a natch. Nice matching set for the Colnago. And it's very light. It's like a screen here. It's almost like a mosquito net in the front. Not, not super, super light, but it lets the air through. So it's perfect for the, the weather we're having down here, humid weather. 
So I'm going to be wearing this and um, I might do about five hours thereabouts. The, the guys that posted said that they're doing a moderate pace. <laughs> so I'm going to take the Colnago and I'm going to load up my bottles, or everything, just, just make it heavy so I can still get a good workout even at that pace. That's kind of what you have to do. If you're riding with a group that is not at your level, you can kind of load up your bike and make it more, create more resistance for yourself. So between that and the gimbal, I may take the gimbal to probably get some shots as well, because you know it is July 4th. And so with all of that, I should I should be probably close to maybe 195 kilos with all the crap I'm gonna carry. And so that should give me a good workout. So I'll be able to ride at their pace and still work hard. So that's my goal, to just get a long ride on Thursday today, tomorrow, and ride short Friday and then ride long on Saturday. Because Saturday afternoon, we're heading up to Dallas, Texas to hang out there for about five or six days. So let's see here. Um, USMC59, I haven't seen you in a long time, man. Good to see you still out there alive and kicking. He said, great review of the Protein Flyweight jersey. Mine arrives Friday. Yeah, um, Protein Flyer, I think you're talking about the Aero Block. Yeah, I, I like that jersey. And in the review, I did say that, um, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, Rafa does not frequently do Aero jerseys that are flyweight. Their Aero jerseys are, are cross between their midweight and their lightweight jersey. And it's, it's like splitting hairs. It gets very complicated. The reason I pay attention to those details because this time of year, it makes a difference what you wear and when you wear it. So if you're going to wear mid-weight or something heavier, you got to do it and go out early in the morning. Because here, even though it's summer, before noon, it's nice. It's like 21, 25 C, you know, 70 to 75, maybe 80. It's still very nice. At about 1 o'clock or so, it starts heating up. So if you're going to be out there long, you got to wear lighter stuff. That's the reason I'm contemplating wearing this tomorrow. I haven't made a final decision yet. I go through a lot of iterations, try different things. I ask my 10-year-old, she says, oh, it looks nice. So I'll probably wear it, but I haven't worn it in a while. It's a La Passion lightweight PSN jersey. But, yeah, it's important. The fabrics are not created equal. Uh, Paulie Longa was telling me the last Saturday ride that I did not ride, he was out there with the guys from Team RR and Dan, the man, was saying it was hot. And Paulie Lunga was saying he was comfortable. Well, Dan was hot because the jersey that he described that Dan was wearing, I've seen Dan wear it in the winter. So if you wear something in the winter that works and you're wearing it now, you're going to be hot. Because that's even thicker than midweight, the jersey he's wearing. They're not all created equal. You need to at least get the, the different kinds of fabrics you need for where you live or where you're going to ride makes a difference keeping your, your core temperature because when you overheat you can't perform all of that plays a factor in how long you can tolerate being out there <clears throat> so cesar says i'm 6'3 and riding 172.5 should tall people be riding with 175 cranks the crank you choose is not based on your height because everybody's different you can have two people 6'3", and one guy got longer legs or bigger feet than the other guy. His height might be his torso. So I can't give you an advice because I don't know your measurements per se. So uh, if you've ever had a fit, then your fitter should help you make that decision. If you haven't, then sign up for our fit, and then I will be able to make that decision once I get all your numbers. Otherwise, it would just be a crapshoot. You know, it wouldn't be a, a good advice. I don't like to give advice that's not down to, to specs per se. So I'm 6'2", but most of my height is from my waist down. There's another person that might be my height and their torso longer. So even the way your bike fits you, you know, the top two length you need would be different. Or if your arms are very long, all of that plays a factor. And so... Um, that's why I try to tell people, you know, if you're going to spend a lot of money on a bike, make sure you get a bike sizing done so you know the size that works for you. You know what top tubes to look for if you're buying off the shelf. If you're getting a custom bike, it's not that much of an issue because it'll be built for you. But if you're buying off the shelf, then what we do with our bike sizing, we'll let you know, okay, the minimum top tube length that you need to consider 
is maybe 59 or 60, depending on your height. So when you go shopping, then you'll know because otherwise you get the wrong top tube and then you might not be able to find a stem long enough to make the bike comfortable for you. Because a lot of the frames now, there, there might be a 56 and a 56. I, I don't know why they do that, you know, because it's rare that people are that proportionate, you know. It's kind of, so they try to hedge. They can't judge for everybody. So you have to know what seat tube height and top tube length. And now all of that will play a factor in whether you decide to go with longer cranks has to do with your preference and then the size of your feet and the, the length of your legs because that's your lever. And it really just comes down to what you prefer. I've written 172.5. When I started cycling, they were fine. I've written as long as 180. I didn't like them that much. And so I settled on 175 over a long period of time. But you, it's expensive to just be trying cranks. I didn't buy those cranks. I got I had team bikes that came with different cranks and then got to sample them. And so then I settled on 175. So when I get my bikes now, they all have the same 175 because that's just what I like. But I could ride 172.5. But as you change from 172.5 to 175, you got to adjust your saddle height as well because your pedaling cycle circle is different. So there's so much involved. So um, if you've never had a fit, then I can't give you an advice that would be tangible for you to go spend money on. So you need to get a fit first. So if you're going to go to a local fitter, then you ask them that question because then it will set you up and check you and make sure that biomechanically that's going to work for you. Because not just because you're tall, you'll be able to handle 175. There are a lot of tall people that prefer shorter cranks because they can spin it better easier. So everybody's different. So there's no one rule for anything that will work for everybody. At best, is a guess. Rodolfo Ramirez. Welcome, super legend. <clears throat> uh, Chris Barron says, I wore my Rafa Classic shoes Black Pearl for the first time this weekend as the sun was actually out. They are the comfiest shoes I've ever worn. Uh, that's the same feedback I got from my my brother, my friend and brother Paul Ilonga. He has the classic shoes in black with the white strap, and he likes. He says it's just super comfortable. I'm waiting for them to come to get more copies of the Black Pearl. That's what I really want to try because I already have a black and white shoe. You guys have seen. I don't want to get their black and white. That's what's available right now. All the other ones have sold out. You know, people make a lot of comments on the boards and whatever about Rafa. Oh, they're too expensive or whatever. These guys make shoes and they're selling out. I mean, think about it. I can still find Giro shoes from two years ago. Rafa just came out with shoes. They're gone. Gone. They're basically going back to make more shoes. So they promised they would bring more stock probably this month. or, or Yeah, they said July. So they've got to be doing something right. You know, they just came. That's the first time making shoes, and it's sold out. The only thing you will find, I saw one small pink there. It may not even be there anymore, but the black and white is still there. They brought more stock, and I'm waiting on the black pearl. The reason I want the black pearl is I have a black and black shoe right now that I, those of you who have been here long enough have heard. I've been patching on the inside. It is probably seven or eight years old. It's the first Giro Pro Light shoe that they came out with, and I like it so much. Of course, I've used it extensively, and the insides, the material is falling apart. So I've been using fabric glue over time and fixing those spots. So it's still usable, but that's the way I do things. So that's a replaceable shoe in my wardrobe. So I'm not just going to buy a shoe just to be buying because it's Rafa. So I was going to get the Black Pearl, but they were sold out. I mean, by the time I decided to get it, I'm talking within weeks after they came out, they were gone. And so that's what's on my shopping list down the road to get a black pearl to replace that black shoe that I have that is on the way out. And that's the way I do things that just get stuff to be, you know, having. I, I have a review coming that I'll be releasing on the channel of the Rafa Flyweight Classes. I uh, got a copy that came in Friday. I'm going to wear it tomorrow. I wore it today. 
as part of the review process. And I was just really impressed because I did the unboxing and I, I taped it. I have not done the editing or anything, but I took it out on the road and the experiences that I, I had with it were very, were very different compared to other sunglasses that I have, whether the Oakley's or the NFS that I got from Christian. So they, their styling is unique, of course, and it just, the function is different. So I did pros and cons and, and just talked about what I experienced. So tomorrow will be the first day I will take those glasses on. Say I rode them almost two hours today. So I'll take them out for like four or five hours. I don't expect to, to, to experience anything different, but it was very pleasant. And you forget you wearing them. They call them protein flyweight glasses. They have uh, no frame and just the arms on it. And they just, they, you put them on there. You know, they have a little niggling things that you got to deal with as far as the nose piece that comes is very thin. So they, they, they ship it with two nose pieces. So I thought that's neat. So I just switched it out and I put the larger nose piece on there, which lifts the glasses away from your face. So depending on the shape of your face, you have to decide which nose piece you're going to put on there. But overall, I was impressed with it. So it will be part of the review I will release in a little bit on the channel, probably Friday. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I just, at first, this is not the first set of glasses they've come out with. They came out with one probably a year ago, but they were like almost 300 bucks. I don't know what they called them, but these they call the flyweight and they priced them at 135. I decided to try them, and I'm glad that I did because the price point is very competitive. I mean, compared to Oakleys, they're less expensive than the Oakleys, you know, are. And and the quality is that they use a, a lens made by I think called Zeiss, Z E I S, as a Swiss manufacturer. They make really good, high quality lenses, and of course, you know, ultraviolet protection, all of that. It's really, really nice, and so. I will release it later, but I'm just impressed with what they're doing. They're coming out with a lot of stuff that just I wish was around when we used to race. I used to spend many more hours on the bike, but it just makes riding so much more comfortable now. You know, um, let's see here. Um, <laughs> Michael says, happy 4th. Yeah, 4th of July, man. These people are already shooting fireworks all over the place in the neighborhood and stuff. Robert Tangler says he plan, plan on riding while in Dallas. No, I'm not taking my bike. Uh, no, we're just going to go veg out. No, I'm not taking my bike in Dallas. I've, I've been to Dallas. I know what the routes are, but this is uh, to just hang out with the family, hang out with the girls, hang out with my wife. And we're going with another couple from here that my wife's friends with. And we're just going to go out. We're going to take the girls to Six Flags so they can play around there. And, um, you know, I'm taking my computer and stuff because we're going to be gone for like five days and we're going to go see my mom, my wife's mother before we come back on Friday. So it's just uh, it's, you know, I mean, I basically um, even though I'm here, the way I ride, I'm gone all the time. So it's just kind of nice to have a whole week where you know my wife actually gets to see me for a whole week. And so the bike stays here to keep the peace. But, you know, I really don't want to take it. I'm going to do gym work while I'm there. The hotel has a pool and a fitness center and all of that. So the girls like to swim. We have them doing swimming lessons here anyway. So we're going to do a lot of laps, and I'm going to do weight training, a lot of leg stuff just to build power because that's a, that's a phase of my training I'm in now. So I'm not going to miss much. I'm going to spend maybe two days heavy just strength work in the gym you know, maybe two hours. That's it. And then a lot of times in the pool, you know, because pool, uh, swimming is very good for your aerobic uh, system. But just with the kids doing laps, playing around, you know, just time, just time to hang out. And then that's why I'm riding tomorrow long, short on Friday, then long on Saturday before we go. And then um, when, when I, we come back on Friday, I'll do a short ride out on the trainer or on the road, depending on when we get back and then ride, get back into it and ride on Saturday. Because the way I ride, even though I, if I take time off, it doesn't take much. You know, the miles are in. When you when you ride a lot, it's in the bank. That's why I tell Paul all the time, it's in the bank. So you can take time off. It doesn't take much to get you, get your diesel engine going again. But no, so I'm not carrying the bike. I don't want to go look for routes and all of that. There's a lot of time into that. So we're just going to be hanging. It'll be kind of cool. 
And so what I will do is next week we'll not have a live session, but I will have, I'm going to make some videos to schedule the release on the channel. So there will be, the channel will be active and I will be online. And if possible, I mean, I don't know how the week's going to go. I thought about it, but I didn't want to commit to doing a live session. I don't know what their internet speed is at that hotel, even though, you know, it's a nice hotel, but I didn't want to depend on that. But uh, I much rather plan to not have the live session and then just release a video next week. And um, and then, you know, so that the channel's not dark. I don't want the channel to go dark. So we'll have our regular releases. You know, I'm hoping there's enough people that show up tomorrow's ride so I can use that for our Monday release because Saturday's ride, right after I get back, we're going to be heading out. I may not be able to use that, but I have contingencies. So, uh, chance favors the prepared mind. So, I'm always planning. Let's see here. Alpha Charlie 65 MS says, I ride several bikes. What type of power meter is available to put on multiple bikes? Um, all kinds. What I'm going to do here, I'll talk about it a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and just give you the link to this guy that I use. I like his site. I'm not affiliated with him in any way, shape, or form. He's called DC Rainmaker. And uh, you go there, and he does full reviews. So you go to his site. Here's the link. And just type in the search, power meter reviews. He does extensive reviews. But they have power meters what they call pedal power meters. You know, a Cyclops makes one. I think it's called a P1 or something. I don't know what they call them now. And then you've got the uh, Asiumika. I don't know what the name is. Let me see here. There are many pedal power meters out there. And the reason I'm starting with those is a lot of the good ones are easy to switch between bikes because it's just like removing a pedal, like your normal pedal, and switch it around. I don't use those because they're all based on something like the look system and the cleat. It's really small. I like the Shimano platform because it's wider. Uh, those are those are very portable. So start with the pedal power meters. And I, the reason I gave you his site is he does independent reviews. Nobody pays him to do the reviews. When they send him stuff, after he reviews them, he sends them back. So he gives you honest reviews. And he's been doing it for a long time. That's what he does. So uh, you will get all the information you need there. So other than pedal, pe uh, power, uh, pedal power meters, you can consider some of the new ones that he, will, he talks about on his site that uses uh, wind to measure, to create your power, you know, the power metrics. And, but it also requires that you have a speedometer on the rear wheel, not the end of the world. So they have many kinds out there. So we'll start with the pedal power meters or just search on Google and say, you know, uh, portable power pedal meter, uh, pedal meter, you know, power meters, you, you will get it because everybody's looking for that. Um, and so, you know, but don't just go buy a power meter now. You need to learn how to use it. You know, there's a Dr. Coogan, Coogan uh, I don't know if I've got his book here. Let's see, uh, training and racing with a power meter. Let me grab it. I keep it right here. This is a good book for you to consider getting. Um, let's see, it's Hunter Allen and Andrew Coggan, PhD. Okay, very extensive. If you want to really benefit from spending all that money on a power meter, you need to know how to use a power meter. You need to test for your zones and then derive your zones so that you know how you're training and what zone you're in when you're training. Don't just buy a power meter and look at numbers. That won't mean much to you. So I hope this will help you, but that's the site to look for. Yeah, Cesar says, copy that. Thank you for the information. I plan to get a bike fit with you in the future. Cesar, um, I don't like for people to spend money unless it's absolutely necessary. And where I'm going with this is whenever I'm giving advice that requires someone to buy something, I like to be 100% sure that it's a need because cycling is very expensive. And then crank sets are expensive compared to other components. You know, it's not like a chain. It's like 30 bucks. You can get it on sale. Crank sets, you're, you're committing when you buy a crank set. 
you know, because you can't just change your cranks. Even if you go Shimano and then you have a Shimano, let's say 172.5 and you want to go to 175. When you buy the 175, you need the new bolts and all of that to attach the cranks to all that. And that crank itself, when they're selling it, they don't usually sell it without the chain rings. So you're buying a crank set. And so you're, you're, there's an outlay of cash. So I like for people to have a great reason to buy components because um, it's not going to make that significant of a difference. That's why I, I mentioned about preference and so forth. You could put a 172.5 on my bike and I will ride well. The 175s, I've just gotten used to them for many, many years of using them. So I just prefer them. That's it. Doesn't mean you couldn't, I couldn't ride 172.5 or so forth. So I know what you're striving for. You're striving for optimum setup. And I'm into that. I'm into the millimeter stuff. And that's what I mean. So if you if we did a fit and I was like, okay, you know, I can see by the size of your foot, the length of your tibia, or so forth, that man. Okay, you would probably be better off with 175, give you more leverage and so forth and so on. You know, so and that way you 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 think about it and you make that decision. And once you go to 175, you're there. That means anytime you buy a new bike, whatever, you stick with that. It keeps your costs down. You don't want to be dipping and dabbing to try stuff. That that's the biggest thing. That's why I'm very cautious when I give advice that requires an outlay of money. And on this channel, when people talk about upgrades, the first thing I talk about is, hey, you know, best thing for a bike, new wheels. Because it you will feel the difference. You'll feel like, yeah, I spent the money. And yes, as soon as you go on the next ride, you will be able to tell the difference. I hate to buy stuff and you can't really tell that it do something. Because nothing's going to make you go faster other than you training and your position. Your position and then your kit. They need to fit you well. Because anything that's flapping is drag. Keep that in mind. So, you know, I see a lot of guys we ride with. I don't say anything, but I see them with nice zip wheels, you know, the 404s and all of that. And they got a jersey that's just all over the place. You know, it's just flat. I'm like, man, because your body is the biggest creator of drag. So you need to pay attention to that. There's no point spending money on wheels. And then you don't fit your bike so you can generate power or get low enough because you will create more speed by being in a proper position, being comfortable and driving the pedals and also cheating the wind than any set of wheels would do for you. I wanted to just put that out there for everybody, not just you. So just be cautious before you spend your money. Do the research. <clears throat> Michael Fernandez, good morning. So uh, let's see here. Adam Mills. I'm doing the same thing on my holiday next week, not taking the bike. Week off to absorb a heavy block of training. You feel great afterwards. Yeah. Um, for me, you know, it's like I've been riding for like two years. You guys being on the channel, just it's just my lifestyle. I just ride. I love being on the bike. So I'm not concerned about I don't have any event that I'm getting ready for. And that's the biggest thing about taking time off. If you have an event that means something to you, then you have to be even more cautious about taking time off because if the event means a lot to you and you want to do well, then you, you really have to watch how much what we call taper, how much you taper. So since I don't have any planned events or whatever, I don't mind taking the time off. You got to build back up and get myself back to where I was, you know, a month ago in a few weeks. But if I had an event, then I have to plan things even more specifically to make sure I get to that event ready with good form. Because what you lose is your efficiency when you're off the bike. It's almost like the body, even though they say you never forget how to ride a bicycle. Yeah, you never forget, but you don't feel very smooth and efficient when you've been off for a while. It takes, for some people, a few rides. For me, it takes a few hours to get into it. You know, so that's the thing to just feel like you've got your your fluidity back. That's that's what you lose, you know. And then uh, if you've been off for too long, your muscles have basically detrained a little bit. So you got to build them back up to where you can tolerate the harder efforts. That's why you don't just get off from 
rest and go do a hard event. You don't do that. So that's the biggest thing. So I, I made that video so people wouldn't worry about taking time off. It's okay to take time off, but you got to have a plan. So if you have an event, then you got to be careful how you take your time off. You got to give yourself enough time to be ready for your event or take your time off after your event. So everything has to be planned and then you won't, you won't really stress about it. Bennett, hello from Oklahoma City. I have learned a lot from your tutorial videos and they have been pretty helpful, so thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so Asborn says, DC Rainmaker and GP Lama, that's, uh, what's his name, uh, Shane Miller, does excellent reviews on power meters and cycle electronics. They just released an extensive report on testing Shimano-based power meters. Uh, my experience with one power meter was a Cyclops G3. It was unreliable. I know it's out there, it's prevalent, and people know about it. Unreliable in terms of you'd be riding and it would just quit on you. And the fix was take it off the bike, take the wheel off the bike, unscrew the, the hub, the nut, get it off the, the bike, and then there's a little cap. You, you get into the battery compartment, take the battery out, put it back in. That's like resetting it. And I, it ended up every 10 days I had to do that. So, yeah, I listed it on eBay, explained everything. Some guy who knew about it bought it. I was like, done. You know, I, you know, when I do, if I do get another power meter, it needs to be reliable. I don't want to be hassling with it. I want to just go right. It's just it's a measuring tool. So if it's not working, then what's the point of me spending the money on it? I've coached a lot of people that bought the stages power meter and they were breaking all the time. You know, it's like. So the guy couldn't use it and spend a lot of money on it. Granted, they have good warranty or whatever, their support or whatever, but you still got to wait for them to send you a new one. You know, just a lot of downtime. It probably doesn't apply to all of them. I mean, there's no perfect, you're manufacturing things, you're going to have defects. But just be aware of that. Don't get dependent on that. That's why I keep telling people you still need to pay attention to the field, even when you train with those things. I know how hard I'm going. I don't need a power meter to tell me. I don't care to see how many watts I'm going. You know, either you can get up that hill or whatever's going on at that time when everybody's powering, or you can't. Doesn't matter what your power meter says. So don't get hung up on that. And uh, the prices are coming down because there's more competition, especially among the pedal power meters. There's quite a few. I'm waiting for somebody to develop a pedal power meter that uses the Shimano platform. I don't know why they haven't done that. For some reason, you know, oh, Shimano needs to do one because I'm not changing the platform I prefer just to get wattage on my display. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jamal, welcome, man. I want to thank all my patrons. I thank all of you guys. It's July 4th coming up tomorrow. Ian, welcome. <clears throat> Tom Nix from Austria. So Alex Lencioni says, good morning. I haven't ridden for about two weeks, so that would mean I would have to get back into it slowly, build up my fitness. Would that be right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you, 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 two weeks, depending on what you've been doing before or what you're planning to do, it really doesn't matter how long you've been off. What you need to pay attention to is how you feel when you get back into it. And I talked about it a little earlier before you got here, Alex. If you have an event plan, then it puts a lot of pressure on you when you've been off, okay? Because it takes a minimum amount of time for the body to get back. Even Greg LeMond in his book, he said, if you take off a week, you need three weeks to get back. What he means is to get back to that level of fitness you were, depending on what kind of training you were doing, okay? So he, and he was thinking in, his book was geared towards competitive stuff for the, for the most part. So you've been training and you're really fit. When you take off a week, you need to give yourself three weeks. What he means is so you don't kill yourself, meaning you take the three weeks and you build back up. So for you, Alex, just go out and ride. When I ran out the ride today, no heart rate monitor, no nothing. I just went out on the bike. I just had the clock, not time, because I wanted to go for an hour and a half. That was it. I just went out and rode. And it was beautiful. I took my camera with me, not with the gimbal but just on a stick and I filmed the lakes and so forth. It was just nice. Just go out and enjoy the bike. So that's what you want to do, Alex. Start and just go and enjoy the bike. And the reason I'm saying that is 
when you take time off, it's hard to get back into it. Let's just be for real. Sometimes you need to be pushed. Sometimes you need something to get you out the door. Okay? It's not easy. So you have to be really disciplined and have a strong mind. For some people, they need like a partner to get them out or whatever. It, it's not the same for everybody. So you don't want to be concerned about, oh, well, you know, I was going well two weeks ago. Just go and ride and see how you feel and just spin and enjoy the sights and sounds of being out there because that's really what it's about on that first ride. Just go out and ride, see how you feel. And so when you say start slowly, I don't want to say that. All I'm saying is don't go out there and start doing intervals if that's what you were doing two weeks ago. Just go ride your bike. Just just, just use the gears that you can handle for the, for the, for the conditions. Just go out enjoy your bike, keep your cadence up, and take in the sights and sounds. You'll know when it's time to edge it up, you know? So give yourself, if you've been off two weeks, and let's say you were training for an event, or you are a high fitness level, give yourself six weeks, three times as much. It doesn't mean that for six weeks you're going to be going slow. When I say give yourself six weeks, what I'm saying is you have six weeks now to allow your body to get back into the swing of things. And you will decide whether week two you're going to push or not or week three or whatever. That's what I'm saying. But if you give yourself three times as much time, then there's no pressure on you. Especially if you don't have an event coming up that you're going to go do. And even if you did have a ride coming up and life happened and you missed two weeks of training, and let's say you missed two weeks of training and the ride is this week, don't ride that ride very hard. See how you feel when you get there. And then before you decide if you want to push or not, always listen to your body. Even when you're in top condition, even when you're ready to race, even during a race where you've trained for, you still have to listen to yourself if you decide how hard to go at a particular time. Because during a race, there are ebbs and flows. There's sometimes you'll feel bad early and feel great later. Sometimes you feel great early in a race and feel bad later. I don't know if uh, you, I've mentioned on this channel here in Greg LeMond's book, because I followed Greg LeMond when I was competing. He was one of the reasons I got into cycling seriously. Uh, he said he did a world championship race where he actually won the world, the last world championship he won in 1989. He said he almost quit the race because he was feeling so bad early in the race. And then he stayed. You, you guys know that he had an accident or pellets in his body. And they affected his muscles. You know, he basically has lead poisoning because they could not get all of the pellets out of him. And he didn't know at the time how it was affecting him. So his performance was kind of up and down, you know, in the, the late 80s and so forth. He wasn't like the, the Le Mans when he was, when he was uh, like in 86 and so forth. So after that accident, it affected everything. But he said that in the 89 championships, early he almost quit. And he ended up winning the race because he felt better in the last hour. Now we're talking about a six-hour race. So I'm using that as an example to let you know that psychologically, tell yourself that if I miss a week, I need three weeks before I start hammering. That will give you two weeks to just move in gradually with your efforts. That's what I mean. So don't, don't try to nail it down too much. Don't try to worry about, oh, start slowly. No, start with whatever you can handle. Because my slow is different than your slow. You know, I wrote today I was riding at 17, 18 miles an hour. I've been off nine days, and I'm riding 17, 18 miles an hour. Now, that's not really a training metric. The wind was not that difficult. The terrain was flat, just spinning around. But the point I'm making is it's different for everybody. All I focused on was making sure I could feel the gear, and I was not lugging. That's the same thing with you. Find a gear you can handle and go out there and enjoy the bike and, and ease back into it. You've been off two weeks. Give yourself at least two weeks to see how you feel. Then you start ramping up. Use that as a guide. Marcellus. Marcellus says, uh, since I've been watching your channel, I've learned a lot, especially increasing my cadence for more speed and my anaerobic ability. You're welcome. Yeah, um, cadence is important because... Speed is cadence maintained for any distance. As soon as your cadence go down, goes down, your speed will drop unless you increase the gear. 
That that's what that formula that that's saying. You know, speed is cadence maintained for the distance because uh, I focus more on making sure that my engine has a certain rhythm in whatever gear I'm in. I try to keep that rhythm so that I'm I'm never over geared per se. But don't focus just on the high cadence. You got to do all of it from like seventy and up. Just like in your car, they've got you know, 500, 1,000, 2,000, and so forth. You got to be able to, yeah, when you need to, you need to be able to rev, and then you go back to hold and then rev. That's that's how you respond to changes in speed or to get through a red light if you're on the way to work or wherever, you know. And, and just being able to accelerate without looking like you're thrashing all over the bike. That comes from, that's what we do here. That's what the training and the bike fit and all of that to where you're riding and you're moving, but you don't really look like you're going fast. People see you moving, but you're not all over the bike. You're smooth. That's what they call uh, suplex. <clears throat> so let's see here. Uh, there was something I believe somebody put up here. Skip. Yeah, Chris, Chris Barron said shaved legs or not. Sagan tried it for two races, then reverted back to the smooth look. Um, the professional riders, uh, cycling is a, is a sport that has a lot of tradition. Uh, when Greg LeMond went to Europe to race, he said they would be sitting around eating a lot of cheese. And, you know, they ate pasta, but they ate a lot of cheese. He liked ice cream. You know, he's from California, wherever, Nevada. And they, they frowned on that. And his issue was, you guys sitting there eating all this cheese and you're talking about, you know, ice cream. Because when you leave where you live to go to another culture to compete, I think it's harder on you because you, you leave familiar surroundings and you leave the foods you're comfortable with, the weather you're used to. So I, I give the, the riders that leave other countries to go compete elsewhere more credit because you're dealing with a lot more. Just the language barrier, you know. I mean, over time, he learned he, he was fluent in French, you know, but just that alone is a challenge. And so it's kind of like shaving legs. They're, they, they, do it for, they, they, they do it for, like, I guess what you said, the worst possible reason. If you crash, then you don't have hair in the wound or whatever. But the main reason I started doing it when I competed was because of the massages. We, we used to get a lot of deep tissue massages, which made a big difference in getting the toxins out of the, the muscles so that you can ride hard the next day. And if you do that with, with hair on your leg, the follicles, uh, they're a pain. I mean, it's just a pain. And so it's just better to keep your legs smooth. But shaving's a drag. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I don't know how the women do it. Shaving your legs is a drag. And, you know, I used to try, like, they, they have this thing called nair and all that stuff that's supposed to remove. It just never worked. For some reason, I guess the hair on your legs, it's so it's just, it, you know, the blade was the best thing to do it. But I only did it when absolutely necessary. My legs were not very hairy anyway, but I would do it right before I knew I was going to get a session with the masseuse. And then I would do that. So, yeah, the shaved legs looks cool, but it's a pain to maintain. But, but riders that compete shave their legs just in case they want to self-massage or go see a masseuse is a lot easier to deal with. That's the mean couple of reasons I can give for that. And so a lot of the pros, I think all of them, I doubt to see a pro that doesn't shave the leg because they have their own massage therapists on their teams. So they get massages every day. That's how they can keep going to help the muscles recover. And you can give yourself a massage. You can lie on the bed and just massage towards your heart and just flush the stuff out of your, your the legs. That's what makes your leg tight, the toxins that get in there when you're riding the big gears. You know, these boys are living in the 53, 15 or bigger for hours. <laughs> so when you're riding those gears, your muscles get tired. And that that's the kind of training I've been doing for the last three weeks. That's why I took off a whole week. And I was only training like Tuesday, Thursday, and then the weekend because I gave myself a day in between. Basically, I was mirroring the plan that I put on the website, and they're hard. <laughs> the plans are not easy. I had a guy buy my winter pl training plan, the uh, off-season plan, and he said, uh, Wesley Stephen, he said, this thing, this thing is hard, <laughs> you know. But then months later, he told me that the results, when he went to ride later after he'd done the plan, he went to ride with some uh, uh, mates, and they were telling him 
how fluid he was and so forth. So yeah, you got to do the work. You want to go faster, you got to do the work. And so the, the body is, a, is an amazing machine. It doesn't matter what age you are. You've got to do the work. You'd be 20 years old. If you're not in shape, you will get dropped. <laughs> doesn't matter. You know, granted, at, those, at that age, in the 20s and 30s, you recover faster. But still, you need to be able to do the work. There's no shortcuts. You know, I have, I have some guys who will be riding with UMC that will come and they'll be out of shape talking about it. And the guy would say, I'm old. And he's, oh, I'm old. I said, no, you're out of shape. And in fact, when I said that, he laughed. You know, you're out of shape. Doesn't matter what age you are. You're out of shape. You're out of shape. You know, you can you can be a 20 year old with a big gut if you sit around drinking beer and doing stuff. So yeah, but uh, the shaved legs look cool. Don't get me wrong, but they're a pain to maintain. <laughs> so I only do them when I'm absolutely uh, uh, at the point where I got a lot of hair and I want to do a self massage or something because really I don't grow a lot of hair on my legs anyway. But uh, some some riders do. There's a guy that rides with a duck shot. He doesn't shave, and his hair is very long. So obviously he's not doing self massage because it would just irritate the follicles on his legs. But that's that's one of the tra traditions, and it makes sense. You're gonna have a lot of massages. You don't want them rubbing the, that hair. It's just it's a pain. <clears throat> See here. Um, I get did I reply to Tom Nix is from Austria? Yeah, I think I did that already. You see here. <clears throat> Tom says, uh, Tom Nix says, I came back last week from a 24th race in Slovakia. That's where Peter Sagan is from. His brother just won the championship. Quiet, strong performance. A part of the puzzle was also your tips. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I don't know which tips, there's a lot of tips out there, but. It's basically from what, what we've learned, you know, from from experience, the books, and all of that. So, yeah, it's just, uh, it's tough. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right. Top three bikes recommended for a budget of seven fifty to twelve fifty. <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, that that's a that's a that's a moving question there. Um, it's hard for me to do that. What I would suggest you do is just go online and look. But uh, you're starting a search. I think uh, you're too far ahead. So the question would be, what size bikes fit you? So have you gotten a bike sizing done to know what size bikes you're shopping for before you start looking? Because the reason that is important is depending on what seat angle you need based on your body proportion, you may be limited to certain manufacturers. Like, for example, uh, say Cannondale. Cannondale has really generous top tube lengths. So if I were looking for a bike off the shelf, I personally would look at Cannondale or Cervelo, because they give you long top twos. That's what my body looks for. So that's what I mean. So you need to get a bike sizing done so you can know which manufacturers are going to make the bikes that will suit your body. Because a lot, some of the manufacturers have very steep seat uh, tube angles and short top tubes, which favor smaller riders. So it's hard for me to give you a recommendation like that. And that's that's where you want to start. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. Thanks for the super chat. So, yeah, so start there. Start with a bike sizing. If you don't have anybody you trust that can do a bike sizing, go to our website, veloharmony.com. You can do it remotely. We have a form that you fill out. And uh, you go ahead and purchase the service, and we'll send, it, send you your, your bike sizes. In fact, when you do the bike sizing, We'll go ahead and select a couple of models that you can look at based on your bike size. And that's the reason. You don't want to just go and look for bikes. You got to kind of know what seat tube angle, you know, that you're looking for. Because the height is not that big a deal. It's the angle. Because if it's too aggressive and you're a big person and you have long legs and so forth, you won't be able to get your seat back far enough, even with a setback seat post. Because the manufacturers are cutting corners nowadays. Back in the day, they made one centimeter increment sizes. Now they're making 
small, medium, you know, medium, large or whatever. They're, they're just making f- maybe four sizes and they're getting everybody to accommodate with longer seat to, you know, seat posts and so forth. So they're, they're splitting hairs. That's why it's harder. You don't, yeah, you don't want to be limited to, uh, I see Asbone said, whatever your local bike shop have. I, I'm not sure. I guess I don't know if he was answering that. You don't want to be limited to what the bike shop is carrying. You want to pretty much look for, because you have options now. You don't have to buy from the local bike shop if you, especially if you want to take your time, because hopefully you're not buying a frame all the time. So that's a major purchase. Two of my bikes are custom built. And then one is a bike I've always wanted, the Coldango. So I, I take my time when I'm buying frames. It's not like buying other things that you buy all the time. So you want to really take your time and be done. Get a good frame that you can always put nicer wheels on and so forth and keep it for years to come. That, that's a good way. And, and you can get that range. If I were shopping in that range, because my steel frame cost about probably, let's see, 2000 U.S., so twelve fifty. If you knew what you, what angles and everything you got a bike sizing, you wouldn't have to buy from the bike shop. You could go on eBay. There's a lot of people that buy bikes, sit in the house forever for whatever reason, never used it. You know, Paul Yolonga bought a bike practically brand new for some guy, the white Savello, that he'd never used, and his wife told him, "You need to sell it if you're not going to use it." And Paul came across that. So you you don't have to buy a bike off the shelf, but the key is know what you want. Then you can look for it and get a bargain because used bikes cost a lot less because it's a, it's a small market depending on the size of the frame, how many people are going to fit that frame. And eBay is a great place to look for frames because you'll get really good deals. You can get a complete bike in that range depending on what you're looking for. So start with your sizing first. You can't go wrong with that. That's very important. And because when you go on eBay, a lot of them will list the bike, then they don't tell you what the seat angle is and all of that. So you end up sending questions. I don't know why you would want to sell a bicycle on eBay and not put the specs for the frame there. Some people do, but most of them don't. They just put the thing there and expect you to go look it up from the manufacturer, you know, because they put the, the model and so forth. And you can, you can look it up online, but that's very important. And a lot of people who are not in the sport per se don't understand the significance of seat angles. Because if that if that bike doesn't have the right angle for you, you're not going to be able to fit it. <laughs> you know, if you can't, if it's too far forward for a big guy, then he can't get that saddle back far enough to sit where his body should be. If it's too far back for a little guy, they can't push it far enough. They run out of seat uh, 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 railing. Even with, and some people end up turning the seat posts around, something funky like that. So, yeah, if they're stuck with the frame. So, all of that plays a factor. That's the reason why you must start with your sizing. It's very important. Renault Palmer. I'm not familiar with the H2 Direct Drive Trainer. Uh, Renault, let me see if I can pull it up here. I have a uh, what I what they call a dumb trainer per se, <laughs> which works fine. I don't get a lot of complicated cycling stuff because once they start putting a lot of stuff on it, that's more things to break. I have a limited amount of time to ride my bike. I don't have time for electronic troubleshooting. <laughs> so let's see what this uh, review and th- and that that site with a uh, DC Rainmaker also would apply to you too. He's a good he's into the electronics. He reviews all this stuff. That's why I go there, because he, he thinks like I do. If you know His attitude is like, if you're going to sell it for a lot of dollars, it should just work. I shouldn't have to hassle with it. Because <laughs> you know, I've got, a, I've got a, a, a Super Magneto Pro trainer I've had for like five years, I think, now. I mean, it's at the point where there's a groove where the tire is on the little uh, roller there. There's a groove in the aluminum. But it just works. So why would I pay more money for something that breaks? Because it's got electronic stuff on there. That just seems illogical. You know, if I'm going to be paying more, it should just work. <laughs> like the like the less expensive one. So let's see here. Uh, Cyclops H2 Direct Trainer. 
quiet drive performance. Let me just do a review. There we go. Let's see what uh, it's got good ratings on here. Clever training. So you can get it from Clever Training. It's one of those where I guess you, you just take off the wheel and put your chain on it. I'll put the, yeah. Train in India. Okay, so there is a review. Let me, let me put the link here for you. This is the best place to get your information. I don't, I don't know the guy, like I said earlier, but, you know, good is good. The guy's good. That's what you need right there, Reno. Click on that link. Everything you want to know about there is on this guy's site. Hey, Paul Ilonga is here. <clears throat> so Alice Lane is asking, do I have much experience with gravel bikes or so? What's your thoughts on them? Um, I haven't owned a gravel bike per se, but I used to do a lot of mountain biking and we rode them everywhere. It's, it's just, uh, it depends on, uh, what you're looking for. They're just as good. It's just a, a bike for a different purpose, per, per se. A gravel bike allows you to use bigger tires, let's say 35C, easy, because they give you enough clearance. And then, obviously, if you're going to be riding gravel roads and so forth, nowadays, you probably want to put discs on there because you'll be dealing with mud and so forth. But there's not much... Uh, to say about the bike itself other than the fact that if you're looking for a gravel bike because you want to do gravel riding they're all pretty good you just need to make sure like i told the other person earlier that you know your size because it needs to fit you not because it's a gravel bike you can just go grab a gravel bike it needs to fit you otherwise you won't have a lot of fun with it and so get one that's in your budget and um you're good to go because the only thing that, that distinguishes it from a road bike per se are the components that they put on there and the fact that the frame has more clearances for you to carry bigger tires. When you're on gravel, bigger tires are your friend. They just You have better uh, traction. They just ride better. The little tires we have is best for the, for the, the surfaces that we ride on on the road. And, and the gravel experience, I think, is really neat in that. You're not relegated just to the road. You can still ride them on the road, but then you can do more exploration off-road. So a lot of people ride even their mountain bikes on and off-road. So just keep that in mind. Some people use their mountain bikes on gravel. So you don't have to go buy a gravel bike. If you want to ride gravel roads, you can get a mountain bike if you have access to it. Don't feel like you have to buy a gravel bike. Just keep that in mind. Okay. They're great. They're great for that purpose. So Alice, Alice follows up. She says, right on the paved roads where um at are pretty rough in general, often head off into gravel roads before going back to Pittman. It's like it's a little concerning to take my road bike down. Yeah, we 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 run into the same thing. Paul and I, we have some roads that we've ventured on and it ended up being a little gravelly now for us we've ridden on gravel road with our road bikes but they were hard packed gravel because even one time we went on an excursion where there was a lot of sand and you can't ride a road bike in sand with these little 25 seat tires and so forth it just digs in and so we ended up walking for like three miles that day and then coming to gravel with a lot of rocks just hard, stuck in the the, the dirt and then finally pavement. So if you have a lot of that, you can use a mountain bike or you can use a gravel bike per se. The reason why I keep bringing up mountain bike, people think that mountain bikes are only for trails. No, you get a mountain bike, it's gotta fit you too. And then there are riders that will ride their mountain bike on the road and because they have a tire that is for on and off road. And of course the tire is bigger, you can ride in sand and different things. So it gives you a lot more flexibility if I had to choose another bike for this kind of purpose, I would probably pick a mountain bike per se. Because you could do, like even Christian uses his mountain bike to do cyclocross racing in the fall around here. So you need a bike that you will get a lot of use of. Don't try to buy something for one specific purpose or what you just described. We have the same situation. So you could do, you could get a gravel bike and then use it on the road and so forth and carry it there. But I think that if you also have 
trails where you live, Alice, then you'll be better off getting the mountain bike and then choose what tires you put on it because the tires will give you more flexibility. You could put on the knobbies when you're just on the trail and in the dirt, or you could put on the ones that will let you ride on and off road. You can even do a group ride on the mountain bike. So I think it's more flex that's more flexibility there, you know. Yeah, it was him. Well, riding the sand, we almost fell a few times. In fact, I kept one leg on clipped and I would just push, push, push. Paul saying was dangerous, right? Because the sand, you never knew when it would just grab your wheel and it just sucks it down. It's like you stop and you can flip over. So it was just, it was kind of messy, but you know, we got through it. The road called Pool Road, you know, on the map, it doesn't tell you it was gravel, but, you know, we knew it connected. And that's how we found uh, what is called Base Chapel Road. That was the day that we found that trail ride. We ended up filming the trail ride with the wagons and so forth. Those of you who have been on the channel, you saw that ride. So what you're describing is great. I mean, if I were to get another bike, I would be getting something that would allow me that flexibility, start on the road. Gravel comes, no big deal, you know, because on gravel roads, you don't have to deal with cars that much. You know? So that's kind of cool. Or the, on the trail, you know, you can make your own trail, even ride in the woods with a mountain bike. So I think it would be kind of cool, you know. And and I have seen people that will do a group ride on a mountain bike. There's a guy I was riding with UMC a long time ago named Bob. He met them actually while he was out riding his mountain bike and kept up with them. Because the mountain bikes nowadays, they're not, they're not dogs. You know, you get them equipped right. They're not as light or they don't handle like a road bike, but you can, you can get them going. So don't, don't limit yourself. Don't get too specialized unless you're, you're doing a lot of gravel experiences. They have adventure tours and so forth. But get a bike that you can dip and dab in so many different things so you can have one bike that can give you three different things. And I think that the mountain bike will give you the gravel experience, the mountain biking in road. All you have to do is change the tires or have a special set of wheels you can swap. And that would be flexible. So you're not spending money on specialized stuff. So Alice says that uh, I've got to get a better mountain bike. I bought one from Walmart a few months back, and that got me back into cycling. And now I'm delving deeper in the Yeah, the, the bikes at Walmart, um, the biggest thing with them is they, they, the tubing. They're, they're heavy. Even the bikes I got for my girls, they're single-butted. They're pretty heavy for, for, for the little bikes. When I pick up their bikes, it's heavier than my bike. And so that's the biggest thing. So when you're starting to talk about serious riding, you want to get the, 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 you don't need to get the crazy thing, all this crazy suspension and all that stuff. That's what it's prices start going crazy. And if you know your size, you can always get used. There's nothing wrong with it. There's a lot of good used bikes out there. People get tired of their bikes. Some people buy upgrades and they still have their frame. They just want to unload it. You can have different reasons why you get lucky and get a good used bicycle, but people sell them for different reasons. And, you know, a lot of good bikes out there. Some guys just get bored with them or they get a better bike. Some people have sponsors that are giving them bikes and they just unload and stuff. So you keep your eye open and you know what size you need, you can save. You know, that that's the route I'm going to go if I were to get a mountain bike or something like that. It just gives you a lot more flexibility. You don't need to go crazy and break the bank. <clears throat> <laughs> Paul said, I miss those days. Now it's all business exploring it used to be fun. Yeah, we'll explore again, man. We'll explore the, the you know, the, we don't have to do group rides all the time. We'll do different things. We went to BDS. I like that town. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Alice, if you're rural, I would recommend you get a mountain bike. If you get a good mountain bike that don't need a whole lot of uh, repair. Just take care of it and learn how to do some of the minor stuff. But for the most part, that would be good. So you don't need a bike shop per se. Just learn how to do your own stuff. You know. Hey, Psycho. Psycho Warrior joined us. So yeah, keep that in mind. You don't need to break the bank. But if you're going to ride seriously, though, save a little bit of money. Maybe even though you're rural, look on eBay. But get, your, get a size. Know what size bike fits you before you go and shop. And you can get 
more bike for the buck buying on eBay than any bike shop. Because, you know, that's just the way it is. The used market's better. <clears throat> so Paul said he missed uh, the days of exploring. Well, well, we'll do some of that. I mean, we don't stay with the group the whole time anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll drop, you know, when, when we leave them because a lot of the, the guys waste a lot of time. I just posted on their board today. Uh, the, a lot of the guys on Team RR are in Italy this week. They're riding in Italy. They went on vacation. So they're posting pictures and so forth. And Paul H. is wearing the Velo Harmony, the first Velo Harmony team kit in Italy. And so Scott posted and put my name on there and said, Elder, look at this picture. And I saw that and I told him, yeah, he's representing Velo Harmony in Italy. They did, they did some famous climbs out there. They've been riding all week. Different pictures they've been putting out there. One of them, Victor, is hugging the bench. He's tired, you know. <laughs> you know, Victor hasn't been training much. And so, you know, he said he was going to start doing a group rise in June. So he doesn't have a base or anything. So he you know, out there, you know. The, so some guy said that uh, Victor looked like a sloth hugging, hugging the bench, and they were joking about it. So it caught my eye on the messages going back, and I went and looked, and he put a picture on there. And Paul H is decked out in our team kit, and he rented a bike in Italy that is orange, and it matches the team kit. And I, so I put a comment there about that. You know, the Italians, they don't play when it comes to colors. You know, Italians like flashy stuff. And so, you know, he got this bike. It's solid orange. It's got discs on it. It's just nice. It looked nice with the kit. So that's kind of cool. So we kind of like uh, let's see here. So twenty uh, sitting bull says, "What do you think about twenty sixer versus twenty niner wheels?" I you know it's just it's a matter of preference. I just ride seven hundred C wheels because I try to keep it consistent. Um, it's I don't know if if it's that significant. I mean, when you compare in twenty six to twenty nine, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. You want to be consistent in your equipment because it's easier to sh- share if you have multiple frames, you know. So a lot of uh, small riders will use smaller circumference wheels, you know, sometimes. But, you know, pick what works for you. Don't get too hung up on that. I don't think it's that big a deal. Depending on the frame you have, they, they try to make them with the wheels that work best for them. So Alice says where she lives, there are no local bike shops. But someone suggested that some of the bike shops have bikes on consignment. The reason I'm I'm recommended eBay is that you have a wider reach. You have a bigger, it's a bigger marketplace. So there are more deals than you'll find in a bike shop. So if you're really serious and you know, you need to know what you're looking for. Don't blame the people because they're just going to list the bikes and put the models. Some of them don't even give you the size of the frame. You got to send questions back and forth. So you really have to know what you're looking for. And once you find, you can find deals, but you got to do a little bit of work. Some sellers are better. They'll put like the charts and everything, but not, 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 not all of them. So quite a few of them just put the frame out there, put the name to figure you'll look it up yourself, but you have so much more to choose from. That's a good route to go. If you know what you're looking for, you get really good deals. And some of them will let you make offers. They'll tell you best offer or whatever. And if there's not a lot of activity on there, sometimes you can you can get a, a good deal. So uh, let's see. Elet72, he says, I need advice. I live in Florida. Flat, flat place. We got them here too. Southwest Houston is just like Florida. <laughs> he said, how can I improve in the hills? Because no time for Google. The hills training for training. Okay, I guess. Meaning to look for hill training. <clears throat> you you you've got you've got something perfect in Florida for hill training, which we have here too. You by the coast. Remember, we share the Gulf of Mexico, depending on where you are in Florida. Ride into the wind. That's just like climbing. Find stiff breeze and ride into it. Give at least an hour. That's climbing, and get a tempo. 
keep your cadence 75 to 95, whatever you're comfortable with, and ride into the wind. That's what the Dutch would do. You know, you know, Netherlands is like at or below sea level, and they've turned out some great climbers. Not everybody travels to climb all the time. So you don't need to go anywhere. Simulate the hill climbing in the wind. And then get a program. If you want to get better, I assume, I hope you have a plan because you need to have a program to know how hard to go, how many times to go, and when to rest and all that because training is work and rest. That's the problem. People just ride and they have a great ride and they're like, oh, I got to go again. <laughs> and before they've rested, they want to go again. So the next day's performance is here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so you got to make sure you you're getting enough rest. But you need a plan, and yes, you use the wind. That's what you have. You use that. We use it here too. We have a lot of wind here. Even now, when we're coming back from our rides this summer, the wind's coming from the south. You know, the last ride we put out there, we rode into the wind for hours. That's that's climbing because it's resistance. That's all it is. Resistance. So, and then if you got a trainer, a lot of the trainer have like a setting with higher resistance. You can simulate that indoors too. It's not as exciting as being outside, but you've got that. You don't have to go anywhere. So I think what you need is a plan that you believe in so you can track your improvement. Sitting Bull says, I like the way 26-inch wheels handle, and but everything seems to be 29ers these days. Uh, you can find them if you want. I mean, the, 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 the businesses will go with what sells. If you're, if you're running a business, you're not going to find an obscure product to put on the shelf because it will collect dust. So they have a tendency to put what moves. But if you want a 26-er, you, you request that. They'll order it for you, or you can look online. You'll find it. That, that's the key. A lot of people come on the channel and say, oh, uh, nowadays everything is discs. That is not so. I don't know where they're going and finding everything discs. Yeah, if you go to the bike shop and that's all they're ordering, yeah. But if you want to order a bike and they give you a choice, whether you want disc or not, you know. So not everything is disc because there are people that don't care to put disc on their road bike. You know, I'm talking about the road bike stuff. So just keep that in mind that the Local people have to make a decision. Kind of like when you go to Walmart. They decide what they're going to stock. That's not everything that's out there. But they're looking at what's moving. And they have professional buyers that they hire to monitor what's moving. So they decide what products to bring. And what flavors of the products to bring. You know, so forth and so on. They have to make those decisions. And then they monitor. If something's not moving, then they're not going to get more of that. So you're kind of limited to what they choose to carry. So when you're looking for specialized stuff that you prefer, then you just do a special order or look online, have more choices. I buy very few things locally. I get everything online. So if you're looking for unique stuff, that's the way to go. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, you gotta check that. Go to, it's all there, they put it there today. Paul H's picture. He's wearing a full Velo Harmony kit and he's got an orange frame. And somebody took a picture of him. And then there's another picture where they they did a group photo, and you can see the the kit. So yeah, they 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 just they had just gotten through climbing today. <clears throat> so apparently, uh, people responded about the 29ers. So uh, Tom Nix just said 29ers are much better in terms of speed compared to 26. Um, some people just prefer the smaller circumference wheels, and if you do, don't worry about it. But as far as rolling, you know, maybe they don't roll the same. But they've had like a 600 C. Let's see. The 600 C wheel set was popular back in the day. But then 700 is the rave now. So they they the um the 29 inches, which is what translates to the 700 C, 
That's what I was talking about. We, when we used to compete, the women tended to ride the smaller wheels. They seemed to like it better. You know, their frames are smaller and so forth. And to this day, some people like smaller wheels. So you, you have to decide, you know, whether you want to do a 26 or the 29 is like a 700 C. Um, in cycling lingo, most of the time people just refer to it as 700 C. Not too many people convert it to inches, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, so the 700 C is the road standard per se. He's saying he likes the 26, which is probably uh, like the 600 thereabouts. So for smaller riders, some smaller riders prefer the smaller circumference wheels, but I like to get what's out there. Like if you're doing a Grand Fondo or whatever, you want to get with standards. So if you need help from neutral support or somebody, you've got wheels that can easily be swapped and so forth. But a lot of frames that are smaller, Sometimes they'll design them, especially a custom frame, to, to work with a, you know, 26er or whatever. But it, it's, I don't, you know, I've never ridden the smaller wheels. All the bikes I have came with 700C, which is the 29er he's talking about. They just roll better. So I've never had a need to try something different. <laughs> Sitting bull, now the shops are pushing 27. Yeah, let them push it. There's a saying that a fool and his money should not have met in the first place. You need to know what you need as opposed to what someone wants to sell you. So if you don't have eyes and somebody's selling you glasses and you buy it, that's on you. Caveat and talk. So let them push whatever they want. You know, think about it. Who needs a commercial for something they need? If you need something, you don't need a commercial. You'll seek it out. Commercials are there to try to sell you stuff and entice you to buy something you don't need. You know, so so let them try. They can push all they want. If you know what you need, don't worry about it. You know, how many wheels do you really need? You know, a spare set and one on your bike. You're done. You're ready to go. You know, you're good to go. So no, they they're running a business and it's marketing. I'm not sure what a 27.5 is, but please. You want to standardize as much as possible so it's easy to sell it to someone else or easy to, you know, get it replaced or get a spare and so forth. Jeffrey Davis showed up. Welcome, Jeffrey. We're wrapping up uh, for this July 4th coming tomorrow. So uh, I finally got the ride today. After nine days off, the bike fell foreign for the first hour. And after that, it was back to the same old, same old. But i um, going to be riding tomorrow. It's a holiday. Try to get some Ks in. Let's see here. Psycho Warrior. Oh, Daryl Shanks. Daryl, welcome, Super Legend. <laughs> Jeffrey said he was working on his bike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the funny thing is I don't do too much work on my bike. Um, I guess I, I keep up with stuff. So for the most part, wipe the chain after a ride and hang it up. Unless something breaks, which is rare for the most part, you know. But, um, yeah, now's the time to do it so that the weekend when you need a ride, you don't have to deal with mechanicals. So tomorrow I'm going to roll. The the uh, team RR guys posted that uh, I think the guy named Paul Meyer said, he was going to roll out at 6.30. He's going to do a moderate ride. And then a lady named Davis was going to join him. So I posted on there that I'm going to join them at 6.30 because I'm going to be heading out. If they're there at 6.30, I'll roll with them. If not, I'll roll solo. But um, just to get a ride in, I'm taking the Colnago and loading up my pockets all kinds of stuff. I want to work a little harder than they ride. They, they usually ride. 15, 17, I guess, depending on the conditions. But when he says moderate ride, it's hard to gauge what a moderate ride is because when we're riding, a lot of times he wants to hold his own pace and he, he's not able to stay with the group. So I think it will be a, a slower pace than I'm used to. And so I'm going to carry some heavy stuff in my pockets so I can work harder even at that pace. That's my plan tomorrow. So I can ride with them because, uh, 
he says he's going long. It'd be nice to have some company. So John Wesley says, did Prewalski ever lengthen their bib shorts? I watched your older video. I don't know if they ever did. I never got anything else from them. I don't buy uh, Prewalski per se. They, they sent it to the channel the last time I reviewed it. And uh, now I'm very, very picky. I'm spoiled. After doing the Rafa shorts, the rest of the guys are going to have to step it up. I have Rafa. I have Echio Ondo. I have Castelli, and I have um, Asos. I have a pair of Asos shorts, and those are the ones that I, I use for the most part. I, I like the, the functionality of the Rafa shorts. I know the other ones are pretty good too, but I like having those extra pockets when I carry a bunch of stuff, so that's kind of cool. But during the week, I tried Echio Ondo. I love the, the chamois. The Echio Ondo chamois is really good. It's close to Castelli. And of course, our team kit shorts that we had from the other one. I like that too. But um, yeah, Pr the Pirowski shot that I reviewed is good for short rides. I wouldn't wear them on a five hour ride. It's just, it's the, the, the chamois is not as robust. That's why it's 20 something dollars. That's just the way it is. So the longer rides, and a lot of manufacturers will tell you this is for three hours plus, so forth and so on. So they, I don't know what they're doing with their stuff, but uh, I made it clear to them. They contacted me and said, oh, they want to send stuff and this and that. I said, well, you can send it, but if it's not up to par, I'm not going to do a review. I'll just send it back. And they don't like that because I don't want to do a negative review of the product. They might as well go ahead and improve the product because we need more people making cycling stuff. We need the variety. So like the spotty wear jersey. I communicated and I told them the fabric's great, but the pockets don't hold stuff. You know, we dropped the gimbal out of there. It, the pockets seem to roll up on themselves. So I was like, you guys need to improve that. I don't know how you're going to do it, maybe with the band down there. And then the sizing, it was a little baggier than I liked. So I said, you need to give us the option of, you know, but I haven't heard from Spottywear since. I guess they don't want to make those changes. Thanks, Randall. Yeah, 4th of July tomorrow. Everybody's shooting fireworks already. So, yeah. You're welcome, John. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are other things you can buy out there. I mean, um, Prewalski is getting up there. Let's, even at the 30 40 50 bucks. if you look for, say, uh, Louis, Louis Gano, even um, there's a place – when they're on sale – a lot of the mainstream guys, you can get a bib short, 60, 70 bucks. That's pretty good for a bib short. So you don't have to, you're not stuck with Pirowski. There's a lot of deals out there, especially with the holiday coming. Everybody's having sales. So just look for the sales and try the different brand. But look at the chamois first before you buy it and then focus on what they're saying is for. Is it for short rides or? Rides longer than three hours and get shorts for the purpose that you're going to use it for. So I have some shorts I will only use when I'm on the trainer or just for a little spin. And then I have the shorts that I take for the six hour rides because the chamois is different. It's important. Yeah, the, the, yeah, that was my problem with the Pirolski in my review. I specified, I told him, I said, the, the legs are too short. You know, make them longer. They need to give us an option of long length, you know. And um, a lot of manufacturers don't do that. Not only Pirolski, uh, there's been a lot of hit and miss. I've got a Castelli short that I love, and then I got one I can't stand. But I spend money for it, both of them. Because the one, one of them has nice length in the leg, and the other one's completely different. And I'm like, okay, this is the same manufacturer. What's the deal? So maybe that was just a short, you know, like Rafa has regular and short and then long or whatever. They, they all need to start doing that so that you got taller riders look better, I think, in longer shorts. I don't want a tan line halfway up my thigh. <laughs> you know? So I like the shorts that come further down. So I only wear the long ones, especially if I'm going to go do a long ride. I want to cover as much as possible, especially in this heat here. And I have just smaller area to put sunblock on, you know. <laughs> Jeffrey Davis says, I'm shorter than 
their knickers on me. Yeah, they're, you know, they need to try harder. They need to, if they're going to compete, they need to give us more choices. That's the way to go. <laughs> Tactile, what's a good low price bib show with longer legs? I couldn't tell you. It's a crapshoot. You kind of have to try because a lot of them will not give you the inseam on the legs because that's what you need the inseam. Um, The inseam on the leg makes a big difference, and a lot of them don't list what the inseam is, even within the same manufacturer. Now, um, La Passion has good length on their bibs. What I had issue with was the feel of the Lycra. It was very rubbery. And so maybe they've, they've made changes this year. I don't know. But that's that's something to be aware of. So you, you got to do some shopping. You got to you got to try stuff, and that's why uh, it's hard because some of the manufacturers will charge you when you return stuff. And I, I talked about that. Even you know, La Passion, you, I can't try their stuff. I got to be sure what I'm getting because if, if you return it, you lose money on the return. So the the top guys don't do that. A lot of them have good return policies. So Asborn said he preferred the Sportful bibs. They also produced the chamois for Castelli. Sportful is a company that sponsors uh, the, the, the team that uh, Peter Sagan is on. They've been sponsoring that team for a while, even when their name changed. I think the name changed or that he changed teams. He's been, he's been with them for a while. Sportful makes, they make good stuff. We've tried, we've got a pair of their gloves, it's really good. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm trying to see if Sagan left. Uh, Because they, he was on the, he's uh, he's been with the same sponsor. I mean, Sportful's been sponsoring them, but the team name changed. Bora Hansgrove is the current sponsor. I think it's like two. I think Bora Hansgrove makes, uh, I think, are they refrigerators or coffee makers or something like that. I like to look up what the what they manufacture. It's a German manufacturer. Let's see. Yeah, they make bathroom fittings. And they, 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 they've been a big sponsor for that team. I mean, it, you know, it's good to, to have these guys in the sport, you know. But um, Sportful is a it's like a minor sponsor. They make all the, the kit. They make good stuff. So, yeah, you, you can try it. Now, Santini makes good stuff. Now, they have the same issue. Some of their stuff, the legs are kind of short, so you got to really be careful there, too. No, I haven't seen the Super 6 Evo. I'm not really in the market for bikes. I, I like very traditional-looking bikes. I'm not into all the what I call the fad, the faddish changes that they do. I mean, you know, Canada makes makes uh, really good bikes. Uh, I like the dimensions. That's what I like about Cannondale. Cannondale and uh, Savello have good dimensions if you're going to buy off the shelf. Some of the manufacturers, their bike, I, I can't fit it. <laughs> so they're not even a choice for me. Let's see here. The Super 6 Evo. Yeah, everything's looking the same. And I think, you know, it's kind of boring, actually. If everybody's got the bikes that look the same, what's the point? <laughs> it's kind of dull. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I, I like traditional-looking bikes. I don't care for the space age. Everybody's burying the cables and this and that, and you got one cable sticking out. They can't quite get rid of all the cables, but it's supposed to be more aerodynamic. Yeah, well, how much wind is that little cable catching? Who's measuring that? <laughs> so it's just this is marketing. But... Uh, 
<clears throat> La Passion return policy could be <laughs> a little more absurd. <laughs> <laughs> They're not gonna no, I don't know. You know, uh, it's funny. Psycho Warrior just put here, he said a lot of percent return policy could be a little more absorbent, a la Rafa, definitely a different feel with their bibs material wise. Um, here's my issue with La Passion. Now, they don't they don't state on their site that they're competing with Rafa or Assos or whatever, but they imply it. I don't like that. You got a product, sell your product. Quit whining about the other guys. You know, sell your product on its own merit. There was a guy who did a review, maybe a, a week ago I was reading on La Passion, one of the reviews, I was looking up something, and his entire review was comparing La Passion products to the different Rafa jerseys. It, the, re, the review was useless because it was unfair to the La Passion product. There is no one product that you can compare to other to multiple other products in any sphere when you think about it. It just made no sense. So I clicked on that the review was not helpful because it wasn't. He was trying to compare a single jersey to a Rafa midweight jersey and a Rafa flyweight jersey. I was like, that didn't make any kind of sense. Why are you so worried about all the Rafa products? You, you bought the La Passion, whatever it was. Tell us what that jersey is like. That's a review. But they're 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 fostering that because in their write-up, they keep talking about the other guys have advertising and sponsors and whatever. And we know who they're talking about. You know, the top guys, you know, Castelli sponsors, uh, uh, well, Sky Nice Ineos. I don't know if this, they moved with them. But all these guys are getting their product out that, that way. And they want to talk about, well, you're not at that level. Okay, they're not there. And so just they need to spend more time on refining their products and letting us get to know their products as opposed to trying to compete with the guys. Because like you just mentioned, I won't try their products because they charge you when you return it. doesn't matter why you return it. They will charge you. Well, Rafa ships everything with a return label. I mean, nobody else does that. There are other places where you have to you know, I, I've I've dealt with Centini where you can return stuff if it's if it's on them if it's their fault then yeah they will send you a label or whatever. But La Passion will charge you when you return stuff, so I can't I don't try their stuff. And then I got their shorts, and after all the write ups, see they, it was they built it up. You, you're gonna you're gonna whine about the big boys, whoever they may be, Asos, Castelli, whatever. So I'm getting salivate. I'm salivating here now, and I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna try your short because you're whining about the big boys. You're saying that we're selling that at a, at a lower price because we don't have sponsorships and all of this crap. So I expect your stuff to be there, and then I get your shorts, and it's like wearing rubber. It's like I'm wearing a a, a wetsuit, whereas the other guys that like her feel like fabric. That's my issue. So I bought two of their shorts, thinking it was gonna be. Apropos with the big boys, and it was not. You know, and I blame them because they need to quit talking about the big boys and just tell us this is what we have. You know, and I told them that because you know I got a discount code or whatever, it's all used up. They gave me like 20 users for a discount code. I put it on the channel under the review. I told them that in an email. So just push your products, quit whining about the other guys. We just want to know what you got. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so <laughs> ah, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Hmm. Hmm. Brett Wire, new guy, says, love your videos in regards to bike fit, returning to the basics. Things will always pop up. Fitness level, life injuries, keeping to the basics is the key. Yeah, your bike needs to fit you. You need to know what, you need to know what, you need to get a bike sizing so you know what bike is best for your body, optimal. So once you make that investment, then you're done. Because you can always, if you have a great frame, you can always change things around it. 
as opposed to you're not going to be buying bikes all the time. And make sure it fits you because if you're not comfortable, you're not going to want to ride too long. You don't look forward to the ride. You do a ride and you come home and everything burns and hurts under there because you've been, you know, chafing. You don't, you're not looking forward to the next ride. <laughs> you know, just, and then that hurts your fitness. So, yeah, it starts with a fit. The bike needs to fit you because then you really look forward to riding the bike. So Bad Vegan says, I haven't seen Bad Vegan in a while. Good to have you back here. He said, I got fooled by La Passion marketing and reviews. Ordered some product expecting Rafa quality. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. They shouldn't do that. They're hurting themselves. I was disappointed and returned everything. I think LP is good for the money, but not a steal. Yeah, if they're on sale or whatever, they've got their issues. I bought some jerseys from them, uh, the PSN jerseys. Put stuff in the pocket. That sucker was falling all the way behind the saddle because the jersey fit me. But when you load it up, it was so stretchy. So they're 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 doing a disservice to themselves by trying to compare themselves to Assos and Castelli and Rafa, in, implying that they're not stating that outright, but we know. And then so you you put them here. And then when you order the stuff, then it's, you're underwhelmed. So they're not wowing you. So I already had expectations of what their shorts would be. And when it showed up, I was like, please, you know, this is what you guys have been talking about. You know, so that's the key. So they need to stop. What they need to focus on is this is our product. We have a good price point for it. That's it. Because I was comparing that bib shorts to Rafa. That's like comparing a Corolla to a Lexus. Different class. Different materials. Different everything. And that's the thing. And so they they hurt themselves in that regard. So it just, you know, I was like, you know, you know they were okay. So, yeah, if you get their stuff on sale, yeah, it's all right. But their regular price, eh, it's okay. Somebody mentioned uh, LeCole. I've heard of LeCole. I've seen their stuff. Uh, Fabian, the guy we, we ride with sometimes with most group, he, he has some LeCole kit. Uh, you know, I'm real picky what I try. If I'm going to be spending money, I'll try one if I like it. I have to, the, the aesthetics has to wow me. That's the, that's the biggest thing, you know, you know. So what I liked about La Passion is the variety of the colors. Like they have a lot of different colors in their socks and different things. They have really good socks. I got some of them. So those are the things I look at. So if you know what you want from them, then you don't have to worry about it. But you can't just be trying with them. They need a better return policy because they just there's no way anybody will try them because you're not local. I can't go to your shop and try something on. So if I order it and I send it back and you're going to charge me, that means every return I'm losing money. And that's what's going on with them. <clears throat> So Tactile says he ordered some GP5000 latex tubes. Can't wait to test them out. Never use latex tubes. I made a video about it a while back. Latex tubes require you to air them up every day because latex is very porous. They ride really well. That's about the only thing. I don't think it's a big deal. Most riders, even with butyl tubes, they air up every day. I don't. I air up every third ride with butyl tubes. But with latex, just air up before you ride. They ride well. If you have them in good, high TPI tires, nice ride. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, Bad Vegan says, thanks. I asked you about the PSN line, decided against buying LP further. Yeah, the, the PSN is supposed to be their premium line. Now, don't get me wrong. They've got some nice stuff. This is one of their jerseys I got on sale a, about a year ago, I guess. I've got, like, the white also with this the, the square block on there. And um, the, the material is really good. It's very light. This is great for summer. They've got some nice jersey. Like, this is not the PSN jersey. I don't know what they call it. But it's just a lightweight, I guess. It might be a PSN, but it's called lightweight. Now, the one that they have that it says all weather, 
the material in the jersey is what is very stretchy. You put it on, it fits you well, but you load up the pocket and throughout the ride, that's st- everything's just moving down literally over your saddle. I, I, I was very, very surprised. And you know, and, and they're nice jersey. I like the color. I got a purple one and then I got like a I think a lime green or something, you know. Just I like their colors, you know, they're Italian, they, they play with colors, very visible stuff, but just don't load up the pockets. So, so I didn't get any more of that one, but these, they're fine. These, they're pockets. I'm, so how can the same manufacturer have this jersey with three pockets that don't sag, and this is a lightweight screen material? And then they have another jersey, the PSN jersey. That's what they call that. It's supposed to be all year jersey, which I think it's not. I think it's uh, it's probably, I would call it a midweight jersey, the PSN one. It's not for very hot weather. And that is the material, the pocket, is not, it just not holds up. There's something with the material that you, that you use something different for the pockets because the jersey itself, this jersey is fine. So they have some jerseys that are fine. And, and so it's inconsistent. So then here's the thing. So I'm trying your stuff. And if I have this issue with the pockets not for me to send it back, then I lose money. So why would I want to try your stuff? And you're, you're an online company. So they've got to look at what they're what they're doing. That that's the biggest thing. So it doesn't make you want to try this stuff. Well, Rafa, I can try anything. I just I got a pair of shades I was talking about that I'm doing a review on, and I'm sold. And the price point was very competitive, uh, much less like eighty dollars less than Oakley, and with that with the same quality Zeus lenses or whatever. And I wore them today, and my impact, my my feel. I wore the thing, and I could feel the air coming under the lens of course you've got full coverage because it wraps and i have to re- i didn't i didn't bring the lens up here but uh the the, the aesthetics first of all it looks good because i you know you look good you feel good it looks good it functions really well excellent lenses no frame around it just the arm holding there frameless and it just you forget you're wearing it now it did have its cons where Depending on the nose piece you pick, sometimes it will touch your face up here because it would slide down. And so what would happen is you would get a smudge, not enough to bother your eyes because it was up here, but it covers the whole area, which is what you need when you're cycling. And so they designed it. I mean, it's, it's made really well. I could feel the wind blowing in there. With other glasses, I didn't get that sensation, the other glasses that I have. And so I was like, man, okay, I'm not just making because it was not windy today. So am I just, is this just something? So other than that one little caveat with you getting smudges on it sometimes when it comes in too far. So it comes with the smaller nose piece and I immediately changed it because the bigger nose piece keeps the glasses off your face more. You know, the smaller one, you know, depending on your bone structure. But it just, so they, they ship it with two nose pieces, then a case, like a bag you can put it in and then the, the wiping cloth, then they leave Two slots for you to get two extra glasses if you want, because they sell glasses, the extra lenses. And they have a slot in the case if you get extra lenses for you to place them in. Because the whole thing is just a lens, a nose piece, and two arms, no frame. You put it on, you forget you're wearing glasses, and you're like, man. So I really like that about it. And tomorrow I'll test it out more. So uh they're 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 doing some good stuff. I already talked about his shoes. You know, Paul has them, and there's another guy here that said. I think was it Ian or it must have been. It's out of Ian or let's see. Let me scroll up. He was talking about it. He really likes it. Uh, who was it? Somebody from the UK. Chris Barron. I think it was Chris Barron. Yeah, Chris Barron said he wore his Rafa Classic shoes, Black Pearl, and for the first time, he said the sun was actually out. He said they are the comfiest shoes he's ever worn. And that's so similar to Paul Ilonga's review when he told me how he felt about the shoes. So, you know, they're all sold out, of course. <clears throat> so, um, and so Ian says, oh, Ian uses CD. Yeah, it was, it was. Chris Barron, yeah, I used to use CD, but I needed a footbed for it because they have more of a arch, and I have a flat foot. 
See these? Yeah, they make good shoes. I used them back in the day. I used them with a footbed. With the Giro shoes, I don't need footbed. With Shimano, I don't need a footbed because they come flat. And Giro now ships a lot of the high-end shoes with multiple arch uh, attachments that you can peel off with Velcro and put under there. Three sizes they ship with that. <clears throat> so Renault said he got a puck. Yeah, I've tried the puck. I ended up sending them back, I think, the puck glasses. I tried the helmet. Just didn't, it didn't suit me, that's all. They're, they're, they're an acquired taste, especially the helmet. <laughs> so tactiles, he said, you have to check those glasses I have. Oh, please, but would like something. I don't know if I have time to get it. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm doing a review, a complete review from the unboxing and then I also filmed some clips after I got back from the ride today, giving my impressions after wearing the glasses. Because I don't like to just do an unboxing of a product. I want to wear it. And so you know what happened on the road. But uh, the, the, the one, I don't know if I would call it a negative because everybody's face is different. The issue uh, that bugged me, and not, not enough for me to send it back, obviously, is that when you put the glasses on and you and there's a tendency sometimes for it to touch your face. And if it touches your face and you're perspiring, you get a smudge on the lens because there's no frame, just the arm. But that's so rare, I guess. I don't know what caused it to do that, but I, I you know, I just noticed there was a smudge at the end of the ride. I don't know when it happened. It didn't bother me during the ride. Like I said, I forgot I was wearing it. And even in the review, you will hear certain things I noted. You know how it is when you turn to look behind, depending on what glasses you're wearing, you can see the edge of your glasses, not the case with the Rafa glasses. You look, you turn to look behind when you're riding, you just see what you need to see. There is no piece of the edge of the lens obscuring your vision. So you have so much coverage. And... Um, I decided to try them. We went to a ride with Mo and them when we wore our team kit, Paul and I. There's a guy named Will. Will had the, the one with the pink uh, um, arms because they come with pink, chartreuse, black. I got the one with transparent arms. For, that was what they call it, but it looks kind of a dark brown. Um, and he had the bronze lenses. A lot of them come with the bronze lenses. I like the bronze, bronze because it's very reflective. Also, in the twilight or early in the morning, you can still see because it's uh, it, it it protects from ultraviolet, but I believe it's also polarized. They don't say that, but it cuts shadows, and that's what usually polarized lenses do. It's made by the lenses are Zeiss, Z E I S S, high quality lenses. I have another frame that has. I got that from Christian that has the same lenses on there. So I'm familiar with the quality. But they're huge and they cover your face. They're not huge like the, what you call the uh, Oakleys, like the, what they call the Oakleys. Uh, that's the one that uh, Mark Cavendish used to wear. It just looks kind of gaudy. These are very stylish, you know, so they're, they're wide, but they're cool and they wrap and they just look, they look arrow and they're functional. And I was thinking, hmm. And then they're selling them for $135. Well, Oakley are easily $200, bucks, you know, depending on which one you're getting. But these are, the, these are the second or third glasses they've come out with because they came out with glasses that were almost like $250 or more. I did not look at I didn't like the styling on that one. These they call their flyweight glasses, and they have just really – they cleaned it up. You, you only have what you need. You need lenses and you need arms and a nose piece. And it's almost like they went in and shaved everything else you did not need. So when I was riding, I could feel the wind coming from the helmet down here over my eyes. I could feel breeze in there. So at no time, it was like 95 Fahrenheit, which is about 34, 35 Celsius or something like that. It was hot today when I was out there. I mean, it warmed up. But it was hot enough to where I did not feel any problem like I was blocking the wind. It's almost like the wind that I don't know what how they did it, but the design is such that you get breeze over your eyes and down here on your cheek as you ride. 
And I was like, mm, okay. And I was trying to think, do I get the same feeling with the other glasses? And I never got that feel. Not that the other glasses were terrible. I mean, I have a lot of different sunglasses that I try. But that left an impression, just how I could feel the breeze over my face, even though I was wearing the lens. And I was like, man, that's what I mean when I say you forget you have them on. And the cool thing is no one can see your eyes. Really reflective. It's like somebody looks at you like they're looking in a mirror. I think that's really cool. So I really like that. I'm, I'm talking about it. I probably should have brought it up here. But uh, it, it's uh, it's really cool. It's it, And it just looks good. It looks the business. You know, you're in good shape. You wear those glasses. You come out looking mean. <laughs> Even if you get dropped, you look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay guys we're gonna go ahead and wrap up it's almost two hours yeah the mirror they had mirror lenses that's what they call it um i don't know uh, maybe i should i should get i've talked about the glasses so much i think i should i should go ahead and get it i'm gonna run and get it i'm gonna run and get the glasses give me a minute Okay, it just didn't seem fair to do all that talking about the glasses and not show it to you. First of all, like everything Rafa, this is what you get. It's like a, well, plasticky. I, I wouldn't call it metal. Feels like metal. That's what you get. You see those two slots? If you buy extra lenses, they put two slots in the case where you store it in there. In the case, you get the cleaning cloth. I just put it on the side because I got a bunch of these. And then they get they send you this case. Very robust if you want to put your glasses. Say you go into a ride or whatever. And so this is very thick and it's padded. It's not like the Oakley where it's just cloth for you to wipe. This is not intended for you to wipe your glasses. It's to store it. It's nice and felt on the inside almost. So I wanted to specify that. Then they also send you instructions on how to change the lenses. The reason they do that is because, I'm not going to go into that. It's in the review. When I release it, you'll have all the details. But the reason they do that is that just in case you want to change the lenses. They, they want to tell you exactly how you do it. These are these are the bad boys. I mean, this is just this is this is a weapon. Just mean. This just says we're here for business. That's what Paul was saying. Paul Longa said this. Everything's business now. Look at that bad boy. Just mean. I mean, and uh, what I was feeling was up here because there's no frame up here. The the wind was just cutting through here. Look at that. I mean, just mean. Even my, my 10-year-old, I showed it to her. She's like, Daddy, that's cool. And you know, you know how kids are. They think nowadays we're out of touch. You know, how you, you guys who have kids, the kids, the, there aren't too many things that we do that they think is hip. But my, my girls actually tell my wife all the time, Dad's cool. And you know, it's kind of good to hear, you know. But I mean, look at this stuff. Okay. This is, uh, I'm going to take this off. This is the bronze lens, and they call it transparent. The, tr the frame, the way they do it is when I do the review, you see it, but you can go to rafa.cc and just search for protein flyweight glasses. You'll find it. But the, the, the frame here, the guy had a pink frame, Will, at the ride that Paul and I let them go after we got to Magnolia. I saw him in the parking lot. 
as much as I like crazy colors, for me, it didn't work. For him, it worked because his bike, he rode a Trek Domani, and he was trying to match his bike because Will is very into, he's very meticulous. So that was his plan. He had the same lenses, similar, I guess. They call it bronze. Let's see what this is. Let me pull it up as I talk about it. It's just, it wouldn't seem fair to have left this like that. Let's go to Rafa. So basically, this is transparent frame. They claim transparent. It looks kind of brown. But I went with transparent because they had chartreuse, which is close to yellow. You guys know that. And then they had pink. Then they got black, just a black lens. Um, I mean, the, the black frame. The arm, I'm going to hold the lens here and just show you real quickly. When you get a new lens, you just pull the arm. I'm going to hold it like this to the side so you can see it. The arm, you just hold it, and it just pulls off away from the glasses. I'm gonna hold, I don't want to smudge the lens. The best way to hold these lenses is like this. Anytime you're dealing with lenses, just hold the edges. So now I'm just going to pull the arm out. It just comes straight out. It's very stiff, like that. This is the arm, and that's what the arm attaches to. You see that? Let me see. I want to make sure you can see right there. There's a little bit of the, yeah, right there. The arm attaches to that. That's all. There's no frame. When you buy a new lens, that's all you do. You stick the arm on the new lens. You're ready to go. That's the instruction sheet that they sent. The nose piece, when it comes in, it comes with a small nose piece. I just took this off and put the thicker one there because I wanted it to sit a little more away from my face. Remember the smudge I was talking about? That's the reason I switched it. So they ship it with a shallow nose piece, and it's easy to take off. It just comes off of there. I just wanted to. So that's the key. Now, they sell white lenses. They have a yellow lens. Now, white lenses are great when if you're riding at night or on a cloudy day. And then even the yellow lenses are great in low light or cloudy situations. So my challenge will be making a decision on which lenses to get. I may get a yellow and maybe the silver because the silver is just another lens. You know how silver mirror is. So I may get the silver and the yellow so that the yellow will be for low light or at night. I don't think I'm going to get the white clear lens because I only want to get two. And I'm hoping they go on sale when I do. But that's how mean. This is just mean. And when you turn and look, nothing's in your, your, your field of vision. This is like a windshield for your face. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. The full review is coming out. Um, but I, I bought it thinking I would not like the way it would look because these things are iffy. You know, not every shape suits everybody. But once it got here, the aesthetics blew my mind. And I have to point this out before I put this up. There are there are the, the convicts of the road. You can barely see it on this one. You see those lines? Right there, they got those lines, the Rafa, what they call convicts of the roads lines. It's on there. You see them better on the lighter color lenses. But I like how subtle is that. The same convicts that's on the protein stuff, because it's a protein. So they call it flyweight meaning lightweight, and it is. You put that bad boy on, and I could feel the wind. I was blown away today. So tomorrow I'll take it out for an extended period. But uh, 135 is the price, and I was like, man, you know, top quality lenses, shadow resistant, scratch resistant, hydrophobic, I think they call it, water resistant, you know. It, and it resists dirt, supposedly. That's on their write-up. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> so Ian says, I sometimes have issues with the arms of glasses hitting the back of my cask. Yeah, uh, I don't, the, ar the arms are not adjustable, Ian. No, they're not adjustable, just one length. Um, you you kind of have to try it. I don't, I don't think you will have an issue because the arms wrap towards your, the shape of your head. They don't stick straight back. So I don't think you would have that with your cask because I used to have a cask helmet. You see how they sit on my skin right there? They're not out. They hug you. And I guess that's why you forget you're wearing them because the way they design them, it, it grabs the back of your head like that. 
It's not straight. And those are the little things in what they do that kind of gets me excited and you kind of see the passion because like you, some of the glasses, yes, they do hit the helmet, like my blue one. But but these arms, they had to put a lot of thought into it to make the arms have a curve. That's that curve that you're looking at right there. That's what makes it hug the back of your head. So it doesn't go straight. It wraps. I mean, it's those little things they're doing. And then people want to say, oh, you know, they're too expensive or whatever. Well, you know, you got to pay. They got to pay rent. They got to pay salaries. <laughs> Thanks, my brother. His boss has cool looking glasses. So I, I, I saw the picture on the website. If you go there, you will see it. Let me see if I can find the link. And uh, they didn't send me an email or anything. I don't know what I was doing there. I'm always up there trying to look for deals. I, was de I think I was dealing with their customer service, and he must have had me look at something. But that's how I found it. Um, that's what I'm saying. They don't. They don't. They need. They need to advertise their stuff because they've got a lot of stuff you just don't know about it. I didn't know any. I didn't know when they created it or when it was there, but I saw it with that guy. I wasn't actively looking for it after I saw it. I happened to be on there dealing with that customer service folks. I was trying to get discounts or something. Protein flyweight glasses. It's not on sale or anything. That's just a regular price. Um, let's see. There we go. Okay, so here's the link right here to where the glasses are. Let me just put the link here. Yeah. So you, you go to their site, unless you go to men and say accessories, you don't see the glasses. So I guess they, they figure it, it's going to sell itself. You will really, when you go to that link, you will really begin to see the curve that I'm talking about. The way they have the glasses sitting on a, like a white background, you will see how the arm curves to hold the back of your head. So the support is starts back here, and that's why you don't need a frame up here. So the back of your head is supporting the glasses on your face. I was like, man, you know, that is that is really cool. And they have uh, they got the carbon black and they got the bronze. I, I got the one that's called um, let's see, transparent. I got the transparent slash bronze. Transparent is the arm of this. That's what they clean. Then they've got like a chartreuse and bronze. So the, the lenses, the bronze lenses are shared amongst a lot of the glasses other than the carbon black. They have a carbon black that has a black lens. And then they have their, their lenses that they're selling, like the silver and different things. They got a brown lens that you can buy. But most of most of them come with this bronze lens. I think it's really neat. And I have a feeling that they, they chose to put this on the glasses as standard because it's probably their best offering. Because what I noticed that even in the house, when I turned the light off, I could still see with these on. And that will work great early in the morning or at dusk. So you don't have to buy additional lenses if you don't want I will get lenses when they go on sale because it will be like you're wearing a different pair of glasses. Because imagine you'll pull the arms off, you'll pull the nose piece off, you just squeeze it and it comes off. So the nose piece and the arms come off and the whole lens, that's all you got. So if you bought another lens, it'll be like you're wearing different glasses. That's cool. So when a review comes off of you guys, it'll just be like a review. I just I had talked about it so much, I wanted to kind of show it. <laughs> yeah, and so Ian said, thanks for that, Eldred. They bend to the head. They would be fine. Good details. Cheers. Yeah, take care, Ian. Yeah, that, that's why you will be fine. I don't think they're going to touch. And, and I'm glad that Ian mentioned that because I had not uh, noticed that it bent to the head. What I did notice today that I put them on and I didn't think about my glasses while I was writing. And that's what you want. When, when things work, you don't think about them when you're out there. And that, that bending thing. So that's cool. Okay. 
Uh, bad vegan cast proton helmet cradle actually bends out so sunglasses arm can tuck under. I don't know if other cast cradles are the same. Yeah, I think he's gonna be fine, bad vegan. eBay has listing for 70 brand new 70 pounds. Uh 70 pounds is that's more, well, 70 pounds is more than a hundred and that's more than what they're selling it for. This is uh 135 US. So 70 pounds is what? Well, I guess that's less, yeah. But somebody, yeah, somebody's uh somebody's selling their new the carbon black is just um the style, yeah, it's just that style. The frame's black and the lens is black. That's the one. So yeah. 70 pounds is not bad. So somebody must have uh, gotten it, maybe didn't like the style or something. So yeah, he said the lenses, yeah, lenses are 30 bucks. So Paul says that's a great price. And this is the thing, I'm, the reason I'm mentioning this, I want to kind of close on this, is that everybody says Rafa's expensive. Expensive is relative. These glasses at 135, they're $80 cheaper than the Oakleys I got, the, the green Oakleys that I got a long time ago. Oakleys are routinely $2, 250 You guys know that. So everybody says Rafa expensive. So what's happening is the people who fall for that Rafa's expensive are not going to partake in things like these because they've, in their mind, Rafa's expensive. I'm not going to even look. So having an open mind is best than to just listen to what people say because what's expensive for one person may not be expensive for another. It all matter of what people choose to spend their money on. You know, I spend too many hours riding and not protect my eyes. So that, that's pretty important. And just being able to try something new is a big plus because even though I have other glasses, I'm very impressed with how these perform. And based on my initial impression, I'm like, I'm glad I tried them. <laughs> because, you know, you've been riding where you, even though you got glasses on, you get little something <laughs> slipping in the corner there. You know, it happens. So this offers more coverage and it looks cool. I just like how mean it looks. That's all. It's like you're all business. You show up at a ride, even if you're out of shape, people be like, man, <laughs> you know, you show up, they're like, man, what is this? The Matrix? <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and end that. This was a special July 4th. We extended the session to two hours. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I went and got the glasses after talking so much about it. But the review will come out as a formality. Just get it out there. You know, I know people will have questions when it, show, when it shows up on the ride. So time to get back and uh, hang out. Ian's going to work. You guys take care and be safe out there. Those of you in the U.S., if you're going to go out on July 4th, enjoy the freedoms uh, on your bike, being able to transport yourself under your own power. That's what I love about cycling. Get your K's in, guys. <laughs>